I'm on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, in the ancient town of Migdal, Mary Magdalene's hometown, to talk with Professor Charles Worth about the Apostle Paul and his effects on the early Jesus movement. I think most historians, as they read the New Testament, realize there's a tremendous tension somehow between Paul's version of what Jesus is all about and James, his brother. Paul wants to go to the Gentiles. He is going to go to the non-circumcised, whereas James and Peter are going to the circumcised. Paul is saying you don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to have a perception of Torah. Jesus has replaced Torah, whereas it looks like James is stressing morality, the same stress on, on purity that Jesus and his followers had. The Torah, tradition tells us, is the set of laws passed from God down to Moses. Both Jesus and James obeyed the Torah, but Paul wanted to change a few rules. There were many disillusioned Romans in Paul's time wanting to embrace a monotheistic faith, one God. But when considering the Jewish faith, these Gentiles had a hard time paying the ticket price. Judaism was very attractive to many people, many Romans and Greeks. Why? The high morality, the wonderful family life, and the day off. It was the Jews that say, we get a day off in seven. Wow, that's neat. But to ask me to, as a, as, as a Roman, to be circumcised, forget it, buddy. No way. <laughs> and so Paul threw that rule out, along with eating kosher and 611 other commandments that he believed didn't apply. Believe in Jesus, he said. And that's enough. You don't have to keep the Torah. So if you want to say it, Torah observers versus non-Torah observers. But if Paul doesn't break down the barriers that kept Judaism becoming powerful in the Gentile world, we probably would never be standing here and talking about Paul and James and Jesus. I mean, Christianity might never have taken over the world. I don't think it would have. Paul took Jesus' message out of its original Jewish home. You need a rest, Paul. I'll think about it. He then injected it into Gentile popular culture. And when it came time to assemble the first standard Christian Bible, the Gentiles ignored the Judeo-Christian Gospels. Not many people today and even not many scholars know that the Jewish Christians, the Judeo-Christians, had Gospels. The Gospel of the Ebionites, the Gospel of the Hebrews, the Gospel of the Nazareans, and other Gospels. These are what we call Jewish Christian Gospels. These are lost. Why are they lost? Perhaps the powerful community that became the church did not want them. They didn't put them in the New Testament and probably they destroyed them. As the Pauline followers of Christianity were establishing the church, they were writing the Judeo-Christians out of their Bible. They emphasized the supernatural divinity of Jesus and did not accept the Judeo-Christian belief that Jesus was a mortal man, a messiah, but not a god. And there were pressures coming from the Jewish side as well. Even though the Judeo-Christians honored the complete Torah, including the 613 rules Paul had chucked out, it wasn't long after the deaths of Jesus and James that the J.C. Bunch was getting booted from the synagogue. To find out why, I went to Jesus' hometown, Capernaum. Capernaum was hometown for Jesus and his apostles James, Andrew, John, Matthew, as well as Simon Peter. Right over here is the house of Simon Peter. There's an unbroken tradition that this is where it was. There's a church over me, but this is the archaeology. That means that room in the center was where Jesus preached. It was the headquarters of his movement. It's incredible just to be in a place like this. Archaeology doesn't get better. I met up with the archaeologist Moti Aviam, who told me that though this was the hood for the original Jesus movement, it wasn't long before they got pushed around on their own turf. So Jesus, according to Christian tradition and the Gospels, lives here for a while. He lived here? He preached in the synagogue of Capernaum. And we are in the synagogue of Capernaum. Yes, but this is, of course, different periods. We have here, and what you see all around you, is a 5th century synagogue. We don't have here remains of a synagogue from the time of Jesus. Odds are that if it's not underneath here, then it's somewhere over here. Yes. If we were able to excavate all the panel, I believe we'll find it. So wouldn't it make sense that this is where the headquarters of the Jesus movement after the crucifixion was? 
because they were all Jews. They would pray in the same synagogue as everybody else. They would eat the same kosher food. The only difference between them and everybody else was the other guys are waiting for the Messiah. They say he came and he's soon coming back. Yeah. They were not Christians in the second century because there was no Christianity in the second century. For sure. It's a sect in Judaism. They were inside Jewish community towards the end of this period, toward the second, third century, Jews pushed them out. There was a great split between the Jewish Christians and the Jews. And then, when Christianity became what it is, when they took over, they also pushed the early Christians out. I didn't want them because they were Jews. The Jews didn't want them because they were Christians, and the Christians didn't want them because they were Jews. Exactly. And that's probably how they dissolved. They just dissolved into the two religions, back to Judaism or into the new Christianity. That's how most scholars believe the J.C. Bunch disappeared, squeezed out, not welcome in church or synagogue. But the great thing about archaeologists is that they keep digging things up. This is a code. There have been recent excavations that have unearthed strange symbols. It's very suggestive. Mosaics and inscriptions. What are they doing here? All of these may point to an ongoing underground of the Judeo-Christian movement, well beyond what was originally thought possible. But that's a story for another episode. Look at this thing, okay? Mm -hmm. The Noras with crosses in them, right? They claim this is the Judeo-Christian. So, yeah. lead, lead the way. Let's try to we'll find it. Yeah. So, let's <laughs> <laughs>